Hey everybody, Carson from Topical Productions here, and welcome to another episode of The Other 99. Today we have a deck by Sean Leonardo using the Gruel Guild leader himself, Baborgmos Enraged. Baborgmos Enraged is a 7-6-8 drop with Trample and two abilities. The first ability lets you look at the top three cards of your deck when Baborgmos deals combat damage to a player and add any land cards you reveal to your hand. Now, the second ability lets you discard a land card from your hand to deal 3 damage to target creature or player. Essentially, you're using your lands as lightning bolts, which can be pretty scary with a handful of lands. Now, this deck relies on ramping and drawing land cards in order to not only get Baborgmos out into the battlefield, but to get even bigger creatures out smashing into your opponents. We'll begin with the creature support. With so many big creatures, adding some extra support lets you get in for even more damage. Brawn. Don't worry about having this creature die. In fact, you might welcome it, as it will give all of your creatures trample as long as it's in your graveyard and you control forest. Skarg Guild Mage. Gives your creatures trample and can make one of your lands into a 4-4 creature. Stonebrow Crozen Hero. Gives your creatures with trample plus 2 plus 2 boost when they attack. Beastmaster Ascension. With so many creatures attacking, getting to 7 counters shouldn't be a problem. Giving all your creatures plus 5 plus 5, however, might create a problem for your opponents. Urabresk the Hidden and Fervor. Cast your big creatures and attack on the same turn, so you can catch your opponents not only by surprise, but also, thanks to Urabrask, keeping their newly cast creatures tapped and unable to block. Spellbreaker Behemoth, an essential card that prevents your opponents from using their pesky counterspells to counter your big creatures. Asceticism, gives your creatures not only hexproof, but the ability to regenerate. Removal? I don't think so, bub. Rebel Hulk. With so many lands out, this creature can not only get huge, but it can be used for its Blood Rush ability to make one of your big creatures even bigger and scarier. Oh, and trample anyone? Mage Slayer and Warstorm Surge. With great power comes great responsibility, or just great damage to your opponent's face. These two cards reward you for having powerful creatures by either equipping them in order to deal some extra damage when attacking, or dealing damage when they enter the battlefield. Now let's talk about Mana Acceleration. With such expensive costing creatures, it is essential to have some mana acceleration to cast those beefy creatures. Arbor Elf, an early ramper that lets you untap one of your forests. Sky Shroud Ranger, a one-drop creature that taps to let you play an additional land on your turn. Into the Wilds, allows you to essentially ramp if the top card of your deck is a land and arrive quicker to your other cards. Oracle of Moldiah, allows you to play an additional land during your turn by allowing you to play lands from the top of your library. Essentially, more ramp and getting into your non-land cards faster. Sakura Tribe Elder and Yavimaya Elder. Two creatures that let you search for basic lands when they are sacrificed. Sakura Tribe Elder lets you bring in a basic land tapped, while Yavimaya Elder lets you search for two basic lands to put into your hand and draw a free card if you sacrifice it. Harrow. At the price of sacrificing one land, you may search your deck for two basic lands and put them into play at instant speed. Perilous Forays. This deck makes a lot of tokens, so paying one mana and sacrificing a creature to find a land is a sweet deal. Seed Guide Ash. Not only is Seed Guide Ash a beefy creature, but allows you to search for up to three forests when it dies and put them into play tapped. Essentially, it's a giving tree. Boundless Realms. Although this spell costs seven mana, this deck does enough ramping to cast a spell early on in order to not only get more mana, but to thin your deck. Caged Sun. You'll always want to name green with this, so you can make your green creatures bigger and double all of your green mana. Chromatic Lantern. Although it may seem silly to have this card in just a two-color deck, this artifact helps generate even more mana with Caged Sun. Vorinclex Voice of Hunger. Not only is Vorinclex a huge trample creature, but it also doubles your mana while preventing your opponents from untapping their lands, giving you a very clear advantage. You're casting some big things already, but you can do even bigger things if you don't mind benefiting your opponents a little bit. Gauntlet of Power. Similar to Caged Sun, with the downside of helping any opponents playing lots of basic forests. Who cares? It's just another mana doubler. Keeper of Progenitus. Like Gauntlet, it will help your opponents, but will allow you to double mana from any of your lands. Rites of Flourishing. Being able to play extra lands and have more cards to cast means you will be ahead. Font of Mythos. You are making so much mana, you can probably cast two extra cards in a turn. The same will probably not be true for your opponents. Now let's talk about token generation. With so much mana, it is only natural for you to invest it in creating more creatures in order to overwhelm your opponents. Jade Mage. Allows you to dump all your extra mana into making 1-1 one, one sapling tokens. Utopia Micon. A slow token generator, but one that allows you to sacrifice your tokens for extra mana. Night Soil. An enchantment that not only helps you to deal with two of your opponent's creatures in the graveyard, but allows you to get a 1-1 one, one sapling all for the cheap price of one colorless mana. Chancellor of the Forge. In your opening hand, you get a 1-1 goblin, but later on you can get 1-1 goblins equal to the number of creatures you have. Oh, did we mention they come in with haste? Avenger of Zendikar. Generates 0-1 plant tokens equal to the number of lands you have in play, and gives them a plus 1 plus 1 for each land you drop. 
Seki Season's Guide. This is a fun combo with Warstorm Surge. When Seki enters the battlefield, have all of Warstorm Surge damage dealt to Seki in order to generate 8 spirit tokens, which will then each deal their individual damage to your opponent. Finally, sacrifice all 8 tokens to bring back Seki and repeat until victory. No EDH deck is complete without some sort of removal to deal with pesky cards your opponents might control. Ancient Grudge lets you get rid of troublesome artifacts and flush it back later if it's ever needed. Crows and Grip. Unlike Naturalize, this card lets you get rid of an enchantment or artifact with split second, preventing anything from being cast faster. Null Mage Shepherd. With so many tokens being generated, tapping four creatures to destroy an artifact or an enchantment should be no problem for you. Sylvan Primordial. Destroy an annoying non-creature permanent from each of your opponents, and get a forest and a nice body with reach after. Beast Within. A versatile card that lets you deal with any permanent for the low price of giving a 3-3 beast token in exchange. Blasphemous Act and Chain Reaction. Your mass removal cards when someone is generating more creatures than you, and you need to get rid of them in one swoop. Now let's talk about Recursion. Using your cards, and then using them again, is one of the great things about playing Green and Commander. This deck relies on sacrificing lands, returning them to your hand, and then using them again with Baborgmos. Zurin Orb and Spitting Spider. Sacrifice a land to get two life with Zurin Orb, or sacrifice a land to deal one damage to each creature with flying through Spitting Spider. Reclaim and Eternal Witness. Return one of your cards back to the top of your deck with Reclaim, or return a card to your hand and get a 2-1 body with Eternal Witness. Creeping Renaissance. After using all of your lands, why not get them all back to your hand and use them again? With Flashback, you can use Creeping Renaissance one more time. Praetor's Council. Not only do you no longer have a maximum hand size, but you return all your cards from your graveyard to your hand. This card allows you to use your lands one more time to hit your opponent with Baborigmos. Now for some miscellaneous cards. These cards provide you and your creatures some extra support when ramping and smashing isn't enough. Spore Frog. A Frog Fog. Protect yourself after you've swung with all of your creatures. Amulet of Vigor. Helps bring your cards in untapped. Gruel Charm. Deals with all those pesky flyers and allows you to regain control of your cards. Essence Warden and Grazing Gladeheart. You drop tons of creatures and lands with this deck. Why not take advantage of it and gain some life? Leyline of Vitality. Your creatures get a toughness boost while also giving you one life every time a creature enters your side of the battlefield. Death Render. When an equipped creature dies, you can play one of your creatures from your hand and equip it with Death Render. Essentially, you're getting your big creatures out at a cheaper cost. Now, speaking of big creatures, Baloth Woodcrasher. When you drop a land, you get plus four plus four and trample. Molten Primordial. Act of Treason, targeting all of your opponents and a body with haste to attack on the same turn. Garuk's Horde. A big creature with trample that lets you cast your creatures a bit faster from the top of your deck. Darksteel Colossus. An 11-11 indestructible trampling body that returns to your deck if he ever hits the graveyard. Besides casting big creatures, you can also cast big spells. Genesis Wave. With so much mana available to you, you can't avoid casting this card to bring about a fourth of your deck out to the battlefield. Banefire. An uncounterable X burn spell that lets you get rid of an opponent one shot if you have the mana, which you most certainly will in this deck. This will be a very political card in your game as it gives you the power to completely take out an opponent. Insurrection. A classic win condition card lets you take all your opponent's creatures and swing for game. It's just a matter of waiting for the opportune moment. Now for the lands. This deck depends on not only using them to cast its big creatures, but also for fuel for Baborigmos. Lotus Veil, Reliquary Tower, Keswick Wolf Run, Rootbound Crag, Command Tower, Evolving Wilds, and 20 Forests, and 11 Mountains. Now for the strengths and weaknesses of the deck. For its strengths, this deck has a lot of mana production. You go through your deck quickly, skipping the need for a land and potential dead draws. Simple and easy to play concepts that don't take too long to explain to maybe a new player. Tokens make amazing blockers, mana generators, and potentially scary creatures. Weaknesses. This deck does not interact well with milling decks. Early cheap counterspells can prevent you from ramping early. Constant board wipes can be a problem as this deck depends on creatures staying on the battlefield. Control decks that discourage attacking with cards such as Dissipation Field and Propaganda. You should play this deck if you like Baborigmos Enraged or are a Gruul player, you want an easy to play deck that almost plays itself, you're looking for fun with the potential to become a serious contender in the game, you think throwing mountains and forests at someone sounds hilarious. Thanks for watching this episode of The Other 99. If you want a deck where it's appropriate for you to shout Baborigmo Smash, then Sean's build may be something you want to look at. For next time, vote on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter for either Mistform Ultimus, Sig River Cutthroat, or Aurelia the Warleader. I'm Carson with Top Mill Productions, and as always, thanks for watching.